and welcome back to our next video. Uh, this time we are going to hopefully finish this one by being in Leicester. We'll see how we get on. We left Crick quite early this morning. Um, I mean, it's a really popular place to moor up. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, there's a small co-op and a post office that shuts very early. Um, not much else there really but people seem to really like it there so we just came down this morning to Yelvertoft which is just um, a mile or two down the canal and we discovered the most fantastic butcher and delicatessen um, this is what it's like Yeah. So she put a whole tray of them in. She, what she used to do, put the lamb shanks in paper bags, which she'd make out of um, grease proof, tie them up at the top like the Italians do for pasta, and then she'd put them in the oven overnight as it cooled down. And they were the most succulent things in the world. He couldn't do enough for us. He um, made me four chicken carcasses by taking all the chicken off the bone while I was there. He told us all about his food, really good quality stuff. He delivers to boats on the canal, if you what three words in between Braunston, Crick, Yelvertoff, that sort of area. It, a real pleasure, a real gentleman, very nice to meet him. Um, and he used to live above a butcher's um, in Victoria Park, where we've just been, the Ginger Pig. So. It was just a really nice conversation. A half hour journey took us about two hours in the end, but we've come back with supplies because there's nothing much between here and Leicester. And in Leicester, I think there's a really big market. So I'm looking forward to stocking up with um, fruit and vegetables in particular. Not had a peach or anything yet this year. So yeah, I've got a bit of a craving for some soft fruit. Anyway, this arm is beautiful. It's quiet narrow very rural just what the doctor ordered up bright and early this morning to get ourselves up the foxton flight which i think is the longest steepest flight of locks on the system and we wanted to get up there quite early because I think it's one up and one down so it might take a while so we're just going to stop for some breakfast and gird our loins what a lovely sculpture it's breakfast on the go as we line up for the first of the locks. It's very exciting and there's a fantastic view from the top so I'll film it as we go down. Oh here we go! Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just went out the window and I was like, oh, that's different. I love it. Yeah, we wanted very untraditional. Yeah, great. Cheerful. Yeah.
taken me a while to figure out how these locks work because in the normal scheme of things you would think one boat down and one boat up so that you know it's more efficient the use of water but the top lock here is fed by a reservoir so it's continually filling once the doors are shut so boats can come down in sequence so there's um, three or four of us coming down and then once they build up at the bottom they'll bring three or four up so it's a completely different um, way of working the locks than standard. Generally speaking in a lock I like to rope the boat up and hold it onto the side switch the engine off which you can't really do in these ones because uh, everything's moving quite fast but the reason for that is you're going down as you can see into a brick pit and you're just breathing in the diesel fumes all the time so if I switch the engine off then I have 15 minutes of not breathing in the fumes and the engine's not running and you're not burning fuel but in this case I'll make an exception oh and I meant to say the reason you do that is because when you open the front paddles the boat gets pushed back and then as the boat comes under the water and up the back it pushes it forward so you have to control it otherwise you're smashing into the lock gates and then the other thing that can happen if you open a paddle on the same side as the boat then it can push the nose of the boat over and then smack it against the other wall if you're in a double lock and obviously you don't want your paintwork scratched off all the time so that's why you have to hold the boat steady most people do it with their engine but um I don't know, I think it's a bit of a waste of fuel really. I'm going to see if I can get the camera up the front and film from the front of the boat. Well, after all that excitement, we're back in the rural countryside and we're shortly coming up to Debdale Marina where I've heard they sell HVO diesel and although we topped up last week we're gonna try and squeeze some in because I'd, I'd really like to run the boat on HVO and as far as I know there's only two marinas selling it and this is one of them you can mix it with your other diesel and it burns with far less particulates and I really wish it was more available just have to see how much it is because it's it's going to be more expensive but oh it's for sale pretty now oh, here we are Debdale Wharf disappointing they don't do HVO and apparently North Kilworth have stopped doing HVO as well bit, bit of a backward step I was hoping more marinas were going to be selling it very disappointed well we just started off on our last couple of days into Leicester but we've got to the first lock and there's a man coming this way who's single-handed and grounded so Henry is letting some water down 
The trouble is this year there's been no significant rainfall and today is going to be the hottest day of the year so the situation isn't improving and we may have to adapt our plans for the rest of the summer because already one of the canals we were due to go on has been closed rain is what we need mm, he's nearly floating Right, well the plan is to fill this lock up and we'll come into it and he's hoping that a whole lock of water at once will float him off the bank because he's well stuck there. Well it looked like our cunning plan worked. He's floating and we're going to let him come into the lock before we go out so that we don't run the risk of getting grounded ourselves. Oops, he's pulling off from the other side now. <laughs> oh, it's all good fun. No, you'll be fine now. Alright, I'm going to stay firmly in the middle and go slowly. We've got something around our prop as well. And all this before breakfast. We've decided to check the weed hatch in the lock pounds. Oh, what's that? Oh, a pair of... Hmm. Pink fishnet. This section of the Leicester Arm coming up to Blaby on the Grand Union. It's like going through a pond. It's really low, full of uh, water lilies. And the reeds back there, there was just barely room to get through. Honestly, the basing stoke's got nothing on this bit. Well, that was a challenge and no mistake. But we're hoping that this is our last lock. Um, and we're going to look for somewhere to moor up for the day because it is really hot. I'm covered in suntan lotion. Um, but look what we just found at the last lock. Don't mind a hard day if you get a bowl of cherries at the end. Ah. Well, that's it for this video. Um, we haven't made Leicester. Um, we should get there tomorrow. And then straight on really to Nottingham. We are going to spend uh, maybe two nights in Leicester and then straight on to Nottingham because we're on a bit of a schedule to do the Tidal Trent, which will be in a couple of videos time. Um, and we're just having to work around the rail strike at the moment for various reasons. So um, we'll see you on the next one. I've had some really lovely comments later, uh, lately, so thanks for that. I really like it when people comment on the videos. Um, it's nice to talk to other people out there. Um, and even from America, that's great. So do feel free to comment um, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. So bye for now.